Welcome back. How are you feeling? I'm feeling very great. Uh, happy to be there. Like my, it's my first fight in the in, in Las Vegas. I did contender series. I did uh, two fights with the UFC. So I feel like I'm at home. So when you come to Vegas, are you tempted at all to kind of do the Vegasy things, or is it all fight week, fight business? Uh, this is business. We are here to work. So uh, I'm here. I train. I sleep. I. I recovery, just all that stuff. I, I keep it simple. I'm I'm just focused on, on fighting and on winning on Saturday night. And you haven't fought since September. Was there um, any hope that you would fight a little bit sooner, or was this a good amount of time between fights for you? Um, no, it was a good time for me. Uh, I'm the kind of guy who, in the last like two or three years, I fight a lot. Uh, I was with CFFC organization. I fight like four times in, in, in one year. I did contender series. So uh, I was happy about the timing. And what about the opponent? What was your thoughts when you got the name Mike? Oh, man. Uh, when you're in the UFC, you can uh, you can run away. So uh, I think we, we are a good matchup. He's 8-1-1, uh, one and, one, and I'm 9-1. Nine, uh, nine and one. We are two uh, prospects in the division of welterweight, uh, two uh, finishers. So uh, I think for the UFC, it's, a, it's an amazing matchup. So we're going to put on a good show, I'm pretty sure. And you're also two Canadians. Who do you think the country is going to be rooting for? Oh, uh, we are two Canadians, but I'm from Quebec, Montreal, and he's for, from Ontario. So I think it's a half and half. Um, what kind of fight are you expecting from him? Uh, I know he. I know he starts strong. I know uh, he's a finisher, like I said. He starts strong in the first round, but I'm pretty sure you know uh, it's it's pretty risky to start strong with me because in the first round I, I'm very dangerous too. Um, Mike has eight finish, but eight of that are four by submission. In nine finish, I'm six knockout. So uh, I th I think he. I think you know. If the fight go longer, it's gonna get advantage of that. But I, I think in the same way. So let's see who, who got the truth. And are you manifesting any kind of prediction for your fight that you can reveal? I know we get knocked out before. I know we get touch when you fight, and when I touch, people fall. So I'm pretty sure I'm gonna win. Thank you. Like you mentioned, he has. A lot of those, or some of those recent finishes have been from submission. A lot of those are after the striking. But if you had to compare his striking, do, does he have dangerous striking? Do you do you think he has a possibility to hurt you with his striking? Oh yes, of course. Uh, Mike hit very hard. I know. We we, we know the guy is emotional. Uh, he, he, he swing bombs. He, he throw overhand and hook. Uh, we know with Mickey Gale, he, he, he loads his shot. So of course the guy is very uh, muscular. Pretty sure he's powerful, and we we can uh, uh, we can't uh, we can't think the guy uh, is not dangerous. So of course he's dangerous. We we know that, but of course I am. So, and I guess on the flip side, both we see both you guys as good strikers. But where do you get where do you see the difference in your ground game? If should the fight get to the ground, who do you think has the advantage? Of course, Mike is very skilled uh, jujitsu guy. He have a lot of good submission. But I think I'm a better wrestler. I think I got a better position. I'm going to be more stronger, more bigger Saturday night. And uh, I think it's going to be a, a good difference for the fight. And then last thing for me, I guess, keys to the victory. What needs to happen to make sure that you get your arm raised on Saturday night? Uh, it more than I get hit. Yeah, it's good. Is that good thinking? Yeah, keep the distance. Use the jab. Keep the distance. Make, make him... Make him uh, um, Make him uh, lose his shot. I, I know he, he, he throw like good overhand and good hook, and he, he he gonna throw it. I'm gonna he gonna miss it, and he gonna pay for that. And I know I said last one, but I guess with a good, nice, definitive win here, what what do you think this does for you in the division? I'm a big welterweight. I'm a big welterweight. I did this sport since like six years ago. I I grew up so fast in that sport. Uh, I'm obsessed. I'm passionate about that sport. Um, I, I level up every every time, and we said 
we said uh, a MMA fighter uh, found his style and found his best performance 10 years after he done that. So it's going to be in like three or four years. So, man, watch out. Best of luck on Saturday. Thank you. Hey, brother, right here. Um, as a fellow Canadian myself, I'm from Vancouver, I saw this matchup and I was like, man, they had to pit two Canadian fighters against each other, you know what I mean? As a fan, I want to see you guys going up against, you know, somebody from a different country so you two are able to showcase your skills as Canadians. But from your opinion, do you think now that we are matched up against each other, I mean, maybe we can showcase the skills as Canadians matched up against each other as well? Yeah, I, I, I think we're going to show... We're going to make an amazing fight. I'm pretty sure it's going to be a, a, a hard fight. We're going to show that we are two of the best prospects in the welterweight division. Uh, hope the UFC did that to came in Canada like in a couple months and to put us on the card. But, well, man, uh, when, when UFC give you a name, you go and uh, it's what we do. Sure. And where do you think we're headed as a country right now in Canadian MMA. Where do you think we're headed? I mean, we've obviously got yourself, we've got Mike, we've got Charles Jordan, Tanner Bozer, guys like that. How do you think the scene is in Canadian MMA right now? Um, maybe in Toronto, maybe... Uh, uh, it would be in Toronto. I know the, 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 the last event was in Ottawa. So, uh, of course, if, we, if they come in Montreal, it would be amazing, but I, I'm not sure it's going to happen. Where did White Lion come from? It's my astrologic sign. Yeah, I'm a lion, and the White Lion is like a, a, a rare species. And I, I found myself like that, in, in that. I'm the kind of guy who passed a lot of time alone, did a lot of sacrifice, uh, worked hard. And it's, it's not everyone who, who, who are able to do that. So I'm a rare species. I like it. Um, and then of all your tattoos, which one is your favorite? Uh man, uh, I have a lot of tattoos. I love. I I, I got a, a samurai on my leg and a, a demon of samurai. Uh, I love the the bushido cut and all that stuff. So maybe the the leg of samurai. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you.
Montana. Hello. Three days out. How are you feeling? I'm feeling great, healthy, ready to go. I've been putting in the work. Um, yeah, it's about that time. It's almost been a year since your fight with Macy Barber. Why the long layoff? Um, I just had like some injuries, some medical stuff. I had to just take some time off for that. And yeah, I'm back healthy. Was it frustrating um, being on the sidelines or was it kind of like you needed your body to heal a little bit? Yeah, I definitely needed my body to heal. And then I was trying to get a fight for a little bit and then they just kept saying, oh, wait for this one, wait for this one. And then, so 12 weeks ago, they, they threw out Tatiana and I was like, yeah, let's go. Yeah, so, um, you know, you come off this long layoff and you're the one to welcome back Tatiana Suarez. They also welcomed her to the flyweight division. Um, first of all, is there pressure in that? Um, there's not any pressure for me. If anything, she's the one with the pressure. I mean, everyone think, says she's like the next Khabib or the woman Khabib. So I think she has a lot of expectations to live up to in this fight on Saturday. Um, ever since the fight has been announced, you've been like, you've wanted this fight. What, what about the fight makes you so excited about it? Um, just that she's a big name, you know, she's undefeated. Um, she, she kind of is one dimensional. I mean, obviously the best at what she does, but I just feel like there's a lot of things that I can do in there that she hasn't seen before, especially when she's moving up to the flyweight division, when she's just been facing smaller opponents. With her moving up to the flyweight division, what problems do you think she'll face? Like just, just, just facing you. Um, I mean, I think she's physically going to be very strong because she was dominating at 115. Um, but I'm used to very strong opponents. Uh, yeah, I think she hasn't, she's obviously faced Carla, who's a really great wrestler, but she's so small. And I think it's gonna be different when she faces someone who has a wrestling background like me, as well as good striking and good jujitsu as well. Where does a win over Tatiana put you in that division? Um, I haven't really been paying attention too much to the rankings. You know, I just try to get in here and showcase my skills and, you know, just get get the win and get the next win. With all that being said, how do you get your hand raised on Saturday? Um, I get my hand raised by just staying focused and doing what I came here to do. You know, I'm not going to unload my game plan or anything, but, yeah. Awesome. Um, uh, there has been some movement in your division. Uh, Aaron Blanchfield just picked up a big, big win on um, this past weekend. Um who do you think should fight for the title next um, after Alexa Grasso gets gets her shot? Honestly, I don't really feel like Alexa Grasso should have gotten a shot. Um, but, I mean, she's a great fighter, obviously, beat a lot of strong opponents. But, I mean, Aaron seems like she should get the next title shot for sure. Interesting. And then um, and then finally, you've been doing some commentary for, for Peak. Uh, is that something you, you, like, you, you really like to do? Yeah, commentating has been fun, especially when I haven't been able to, you know, fight. Just something else to to work towards and get, try to get good at. Is that something that you would like to do post-fighting? Yeah, possibly. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. I've just got one question for you. A lot of people talk about ring rust, um, and I know that both of you have been out for uh, quite some time, obviously, her for a little bit longer. Do you feel like that's... A real thing? Do you feel like it's a myth? Do you feel like you have to be out for a certain amount of time for that to really be a thing? What are your thoughts um, on that? I think ring gross definitely depends on the person. Uh, I can't really speak towards everyone. Um, but I, I don't really feel it when I go back in there. I mean, I've had layoffs where I've been off a year, eight months or so. Just right when the, right when the time starts, you just kind of zone in and get back to where you left off. Do you think it's a mental thing? Oh, uh, yeah, 100% it's a mental thing. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. That last fight with Macy was a very competitive fight. Were there things that you were able to take away from that loss? Um, yeah, just expect anything, I guess. I think I wasn't really expecting that kind of fight from her where she was just kind of holding me on the cage. Um, I was kind of upset because it, it seemed like it was such a boring fight. Um, there was just so much that I wasn't able to do that I worked on, and that was really frustrating. And I guess looking at this opponent in this one, she's very, very commanding when she's able to get a hold of people. Do you feel that this is this has the possibility of that same sort of outcome of maybe not the most exciting fight at times if she's not trying to push striking, if she wants to just engage in the, the wrestling? Um, she's 100% just going to want to engage in the wrestling, and I've prepared for that. So, 
yeah, she's going to have to work really hard for that. Awesome. And I guess just I, like you said, I know it was a good fight camp. Where are you feeling that you maybe made the most improvements from the last fight? Do, do you think it was the striking? Do you, do you feel that maybe on the, the ground stuff? Where do you feel that you, most, you had the most improvement from the, the last time we saw you? Um, my wrestling, for sure. Wrestling, cage work, groundwork. I mean, everything. <laughs> awesome. And uh, I've been asking a lot, of just keys to the victory, you know, for you to make sure you get your hand raised on Saturday. What needs to happen out there? Um, move a lot. Uh, don't run away from the takedown, you know, kind of engage in it if that's where she wants to go and uh, just impose my will on her. Awesome. Best of luck on Saturday. Thank you.
Well, welcome back. I know it didn't quite go your way last time. Can you kind of talk to me a little bit about that fight and how you were able to kind of get back in the groove of things? Uh, that last fight, um, it was ultimately ruled no contest. So, I mean, I just found out that like two weeks ago, but before then I was trying to get back, you know, trying to focus on getting back on the win streak. But with, with that being no contest and uh, with this fight coming up, I'll be back on a, uh, I'll be on a three fight win streak. So, I mean, everything happened for a reason. So there's no extra pressure going into this fight knowing that you have that no contest sitting there? No, nah, I mean, it's always pressure when, you, when you're when fighting, but, you know, no uh, negative energy or nothing. I'm going to go in there and, and give it my all like I do. Did you want to come back a little bit sooner, or was it a good amount of time between your last fight and this fight? Uh, I mean, it really just, you know, whenever they can get me in. And uh, it was a, this, this was a day that they, they said they can get me in, so, you know, I'm always up to fight, you know, and they call me. They know I don't turn down any matchup, so yeah, I was ready to go. What were your thoughts when you heard the opponent's name? Uh, it's, it's a good win. I know he was ranked in the top ten once upon a time, so it would be a good win. And uh, after this, uh, I'll be looking for a number next to my name. How do you expect this fight to go? Um, I'm looking for the finish. I always look for the finish. So let's say uh, second round knockout. What sort of keys to victory do you need to to have to make that happen? Speed and power. You know, I feel like I got the speed advantage and the power advantage. All I got to do is uh, pick my shots, and uh, uh, you know, it's all about timing. Thank you. Hey, Dontel, do you ever think back and be like, "Damn, I fought Cyril Gaon in his in your UFC debut," yeah. and I mean, and you went three rounds with them? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, after my contender series win, you know, I, I said I want to fight whoever can get me to the belt as soon as possible. So the UFC gave me what I wanted, and uh, that was Cyril Gaon. So, you know, I, I don't regret any of the matchups or anything. I know uh, if I fought him today, it would be a totally different fight. But, uh, yeah, I enjoyed the experience. Were you surprised that he made it all the way up to the championship? No, I wasn't surprised. I figured whoever was whoever won that fight between me and him was going to be catapulted to the to the belt. So, you know, congrats on his success. I'll see him. And I just wanted to know, uh, you know, he's facing John Jones. John Jones coming back, uh, coming back, he's moving up to heavyweight. I just wanted your thoughts on on John Jones. Uh, John's a training partner and a good friend of mine. Um, you know, it's, I know Siragon got his hands full. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, John's one of the best to ever do it. So, you know. How has it been, you know, being being by his side during this whole transformation of, of him going from a light from a light heavyweight to a heavyweight? Uh, motherfucker's strong, I say it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and so he he's not lacking any anything on the strength side to come into the heavyweight. So I think he'll do just fine. Awesome, thanks, man. Just a couple questions. What? How would you rate your opponent's striking? Um, I give him a seven out of ten. Is that just giving them pure power, and but maybe not as much technique? Or what do you think is technique and overall? I think overall? It, would, it would be power and technique, you know, overall about a seven. I give myself a, a nine, nine and a half. Oh, <laughs> well, at least you're modest about it. You know, that's, <laughs> yeah. well, uh, just last one, looking at your opponent. So, you know, I know she asked you about coming in here and not having and now not having a loss. He's coming in here with four losses on his record. Yeah. Are you feeling that he's going to be feeling the pressure? And do you think that he's going to maybe fight a little erratic because he doesn't want to get another L on his record? I feel like uh, when every time, even if they win or lose, and I feel like I'm expecting the best form in any of my opponents. So I expect him to be in the best shape of his life and the best form of his life. You know, that's, how, that's what I expect. And with a good devastating win, what do you think that would do for you in the division? Uh, put me in. I, I should give me a number. You know what I'm saying? I'll go ahead and finish this dude, hand him accordingly. I feel like I should have a number. Awesome. Best of luck on Saturday. Thank you.
Brandon. What's up, bro? Three days out. How are you feeling? Like every other time, just ready to go. You got the long hair, man. Are you going to braid it up or what? Yeah, full braid this time. It's, it feels like uh, the Tom Breeze fight all over again. So hopefully the performance says the same and uh, everything will be good and dandy and ready to go. There's still time before the fight, but so knock on wood. But you finally got your top 15 matchup. Alex, <laughs> don't, don't, don't jinx me. Uh, how does it feel? Alex, you know, if he pulls out for some reason, you're going to owe me a second check. I got you. I got you. All right. I know you're out here like that. Uh, no, it feels good. It feels good to finally have, you know, looking for that number and the same guy, the whole camp, full camp, uh, and a good guy at that. He, he's, he's a good opponent, and um, I think he's a good guy. Like, I think he's cool, but uh, no matter what, none of that – None of that matters. I'm going to go out there and I'm going to do what I need to do and uh, we can be friends after, but I'm excited. Um, there's been a lot of hype behind Andre Muniz, especially his grappling. Um, as a grappler yourself, like, what do you see in him? I feel he's good at certain positions and some transitions he does is a little different, but from the jiu-jitsu aspect, MMA jiu-jitsu and sport jiu-jitsu is totally different. I understand his positionings. I understand what he's looking for. I understand what he's trying to do. And I understand his intentions. I feel like many guys haven't before. And I also don't feel like those guys were just very competent in that area. So, yeah, I think we're. I think he's, he's, he's met his match for that aspect of his game, that, which is his best aspect. And some of his best positions on the ground are also my best defensive positions on the ground. So it's, uh, it's very interesting. If he can get it there, it's very interesting. And um, I look forward to testing that. So, you know, most of the time, if it's two grapplers, it kind of stands up. It's, it's going to be a stand-up. But do you, do, you, are, do you want to test your grappling against his, or do you think it's going to kind of be a fight on the feet? Honestly, like, some people don't think he'll get me down. Like, obviously, I want to go to the ground on my terms, not on his terms. Uh, my ego says just go out and jump guard in the first five seconds and see what happens, right? That's my ego speaking. But um, I want to go on my terms. I'm not, a, I'm not fighting his fight. He's going to fight my fight. I'm going to make him fight my fight. Uh, I'm pretty good everywhere. I'm not just a one-trick pony. I'm not just good at one thing. Uh, I can do it all. And uh, I'm going to beat him wherever the fight goes. I'm there for 17 minutes of focus, 15 minutes of beating him up. And uh, if he can't take it for 15 minutes, that's fine. That's great. That looks great for me. But either way, I'm bringing something totally different than he's seen before and that he's felt. And um, for me at this point, I'm just trying to channel all those, that energy and that nerves and just ease through it, work through it, be in my time, be in my moment. And... Um, See what happens on fight night. I'm not going to get overwhelmed about anything. I'm not going to feel any pressure. I'm going to just stay in my lane, do what I need to do, have fun this week, and uh, go out and try to show out on Saturday. I can't control that outcome, uh, but I can control my preparation, and my preparation has been amazing. Uh, you said after your last fight that you uh, should never be on the prelims again, so you got bumped up to the co-main. <laughs> what happened? I don't know. I guess I look too cute or something. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I just, honestly, I just like to talk a little shit, but um, I don't really care. I fight first of the night. I'll fight first of the night. That means I'm just going to get some food after and do what I need to do. But um, I'll fight at midnight. Hell, wouldn't we fight in Singapore at 5 in the morning? Yeah, so, <laughs> you know, uh, I'm going to go fight uh, when it's time. And I'm prepared every which way that you can possibly be prepared for and like I said in everything that I've done leading up to the fight in order for Andre to be, to beat me he's that good and I'll be the first person to step up and say he is just that good if he beats me I don't think he's gonna beat me I don't think he comes close to beating me but if he does he is just that good and that's that's what I that's how I want it if he beats me he's just that good with a win over him, you get you, you get your top fifteen spot. What do you want it? What do you want the rest of the year to look like? Uh, hopefully, this will be my last time at three times a year. Uh, obviously, after the rankings, you know it's hard with uh, dates for everyone and things like that. So hopefully, this will be my last time three times fighting three times this year. And um, yeah, I got to go out here and finish Munez and then 
obviously I want my rematches back, but um, you know sometimes they don't they don't want to do that right now. Excuse me. And so um, I'll look for uh, Jack Hermanson or Drickus Duplessis. No matter what happens next weekend, he's still ahead of me. So um, and then Jack and I they've called me short notice a couple times, but I was hurt and. Um, so those are two very realistic fights that keep me kind of the time frame that I want to keep on because uh, hopefully 2024 I can challenge for that belt. That's that's my goal. You go out there, finish my knees, you get that new contract that you want? Well, I got, I've got a, I've got a nice contract. I'm happy with what I, what I, what I make, but I'm trying to stay uh, close to finishing out this contract before I challenge for that belt because the next contract is even nicer. So, um, so yeah, I just uh, – it's just, just slow playing. I got some time. I'm only, I just turned 27 in December, so I got a little time. I'm, I'm just starting to come into my prime, I think. The abilities have always been there. Um, my technique has always been there. Obviously, you can always sharpen up on things as, as I'm trying to do and improve. But for me, it's just the mental aspect of this whole fight thing. Obviously, it comes faster to some people than others. But for me, I feel like I'm just coming into that prime. I'm not there yet, but I'm, like, right there. So, uh I feel good. I feel really good. And finally, All In Combat is this weekend. Your your first promotion, your first uh, card is this weekend. Kind of talk about it. Yeah, it was a little difficult. I mean, I've had my my promotion planned since October, I believe, uh, just because I wanted to slow play it, make sure I have everything in line. I didn't want there to be any crazy, unexpected things. Uh, when they called for the fight, I had told them, I was like, can we move it to the week after? It's a pay-per-view. Like, at that time, they didn't have all, all these fights on there. And, um, I don't know what happened. Obviously, I don't know behind the scenes, but I, I don't know if it was him or the UFC, but they didn't want it. I asked them to move it up, like, forward a week to last week, and they didn't want to do that neither. So I was like, I'm still not going to say no. I got good people running the event. The event's good. Obviously, it's my first show. I fronted the money for everything. I don't have any investors or anything. I have sponsors that helped out a lot, um, but everything mainly, I fronted that money. So, like, it's nothing crazy as far as, like, the, the pros that I have. But I'll get there. My goal is to be something like Fury, you know. Like, there are good friends of mine that run that promotion. He's the champion for them. And, um, yeah, I'm, I, I, my goal is to go bigger. But uh, it's a stage, and I feel like my business model is going to last through time. So, But I'm excited for it. I'm glad. I'm, I'm excited to see where it goes. I'm excited to learn that business side. And um, I can't wait to be at the next one in May. So is it like are you going to be kind of warming up, also watching the watching your your promotion, or is it are you just going to kind of like come back to it after your fight? I'll just come back to it after the fight. I'll get the recaps and the fights and all, all that stuff after the fight. Um, but for me, I just need to focus on what I'm doing, and uh, this is what feeds my family. This is what provides for that business. So at the end of the day, this is the most important thing that needs to be done, and. Um, I got a great opportunity here. Why waste it? You know, uh, I'm going to go out there and just take care of business and we'll figure out everything else after no matter what happens. Awesome. Thanks, man. Of course, man. Hey, I've just got one question for you. I saw on your Instagram, you have a GoFundMe up for, it looks like a friend. I was wondering if you could talk to us a little bit about that and maybe give a little bit of plug for it. Oh yeah. So thanks for asking. Actually, I wanted to put that in, but that's my friend, JJ. Um, he just got diagnosed in January 26th with an incurable cancer. It's basically a bone marrow cancer. I don't know the exact names because you know they, they're a little bit outside of that southern uh, intellect. But um, yeah, so he got diagnosed with an incurable, like basically bone marrow cancer, and he got diagnosed with an incurable disease as well at the same time, so two. And um, he's under 40, so these, these, these diseases and cancers are super rare in people, but they're even more rare in people under 40. He's got four kids under 10, and he's actually like a, a great man, like a great father. Um, he quit doing a lot of jobs that he was doing just to be with his kids more, be at every event. Um, he was a bodybuilder at one point, um, personal trainer. So um, I've watched him physically change kids' lives and people's lives. And um, so I'm trying to just help him and his family as best as I can. Obviously, financially, it's hard when you go from where I'm from, it's mostly a two, two person income. Like that's how you pay your bills. And uh, I don't know exactly for their case, but most people live paycheck to paycheck where I come from. So I can't imagine the pressure um, that's coming on his wife, uh, Lisa, 
and their family with going from a dual income household to a single income as well as the bills that come from his, the treatments that he gets and all the pressure and everything they go through like I, my brother has been in the ho- was in the hospital for a long time he's paralyzed now so I know that stress but I, I can't imagine the stress that she's having they've known each other since they were 10 or 9 or 10 years old and they just happen to grow a relationship from there and now they got four kids and I can't imagine having to lose your best friend and your spouse possibly and um, but he's still out here fighting he's still out here trying to do what he can to be there for his kids so uh, I'm trying to just do what I can to help him and his family, and uh, hopefully after I fight, if I can win this bonus, I'm going to take care of them. Thank you. Thank you. It's, I was going to half braid it to let the back hang, but the problem is it goes into my eye still. Yes, so when it goes to that length, then I just have to braid the whole thing, so. Uh, but it looks nice, though, sometimes. Not
Just kidding. Tatiana, <laughs> welcome Hi. back. Thank you. Um, how does it feel to be in Fight Week again? <laughs> um, I'm really happy to be here. <laughs> I would say excited, but I've said that like around 50 times, maybe even more. So I'm like at this point, I can't use that word anymore. <laughs> how are the nerves or, 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 or does it just feel normal that you're back? Yeah, I don't, I don't feel nervous. Yeah, I'm excited, actually. Oh, shoot. There we go. I caved in. It's about, about a minute in. Got me. Um, <laughs> no, but um, yeah, I'm just, I'm just happy to be here, and uh, I'm not nervous. I'm just ready to perform on Saturday. Um, and yeah, that's it. How's the body ahead of this fight? Um, you know, your long-awaited return was supposed to be in 2021. Right, um, yeah. What, what happened with that? So um, I actually um, was training to fight my, Roxanne Mataferi, and um, I was wrestling at my brother's school, and um, I sustained a really bad knee injury. I tore, like, every single ligament in my knee, except for the PCL. It had my back. Literally, because it's in the back. I don't know. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so um, I tore my ACL, my MCL, my LCL, my lateral meniscus. So it was a brutal injury. So it was a little bit tough to come back. And it's so funny because, like, while I was there, you know, I've seen, like, people come in um, with ACL injuries, just, like, you know, regular ACL injuries. And I'm like, why are they walking? And they're like, oh, she, cause she, they didn't tear every ligament in their knee. Like, cause I had to be off crutches for like 10, like, oh, at the end of it, it was like eight to 10 weeks. So I had to relearn how to walk and run. And I mean, it was, it was, it was crazy. Um, and I guess if I do an injury, I just kind of go all out. You know, my story is just like, I can't be half in, you know, it's going to be like super dramatic, I guess. <laughs> you, go, you go all in on your injuries. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I mean, when that happened, like, what, 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 like, what went through your mind? Where, like, was there any thoughts of like, why do I keep getting hurt? Like, is this the end of, is this the end of my story? Like, what, what was going on through your head? Yeah, when I got, when I got the knee injury, it definitely was very discouraging. For a couple of days, I literally just like laid in my bed and cried. <laughs> but um, then I picked myself up, like I always do, and. Um, I literally was on the Airdyne bike with one leg and two arms and just like going ham. And I was like, there's nothing going to deter me from being what I think that I'm destined to be. And I believe that. So um, I just picked myself back up and then here I am, you know, so. So how's the body feel this week? <laughs> oh, it feels great. Um, what time is it? I have to see Heather at 3.30. <laughs> It'll feel better then, too. No, but, uh, you know, I have the best physical therapist here at the UFCPI um, helping me. They're so great. I'm so thankful for them because if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be able to get back to the octagon. So, um, you know, I'm glad to be in, in the UFC where they invest in their athletes in that in that way. Last thing about, like, the layoff and your, you know, your comeback, just how frustrating has it been being on the sideline as, you know, the two divisions, now, now you're going to be in divisions, they just keep moving and you're on the sidelines when everyone knows how good you are and the, and the possibilities are, are, are endless. Just how frustrating has it been? Um, it's definitely been frustrating, um, but, you know, I just got to focus. If I was focused on my frustration, I probably would never get here, right? So um, regardless of my frustration, I just made sure to stay um, motivated um, and just remember that I want to be the best in the world. And I have to have that mentality whether life's going my way or if it's not. So, um, I mean, even throughout those two years when I was rehabilitating my neck, you know, I was like, it was a struggle, you know, every single day. It was like, I mean, two years is a long time, you know, especially when you don't, you're don't, you not doing what you love. And, like, I couldn't go live at all during that time. So I took the time off, and obviously I was getting better because I was, like, doing technique and stuff like that, but I wasn't able to go live, which is, you know, what I love to do because you're always solving puzzles, and I wasn't able to solve any puzzles. <laughs> so um, <laughs> it was hard, you know, but... Um, and then I had the knee injury, obviously, soon after when I was going to fight Roxanne Mataferi. So, I mean, you know, um, 
I don't know. I just know that um, I'm mentally like prepared for anything that comes my way, and I think that's. I'm I'm glad. Like I, wrestling taught me that. You know, I've been wrestling since I, since I was three years old. So I don't I don't think I don't know any difference. Three days away. Um, have you? Do you feel the hype behind your return from the? From the promotion, from the fans, from all the analysts, like, do you feel do you feel the love and the hype? Yeah, I definitely feel like people are excited to see me fight again. I'm excited to fight, um, and um, I'm just gonna perform like I always do and have fun, enjoy my time out there. That sounds crazy, you know. I'm gonna be in a fist fight. I'm like, can't wait, can't wait. <laughs> but it is like that, you know. So when you love it like I do, and everybody else does, so. You got Montana De La Rosa. Um, what are your thoughts on her as an opponent? Yeah, I think she's a great opponent. She's well-rounded, um, and she's you know she's a grappler. So I look forward to testing my skills against a, a good opponent. Do you think it's a perfect return opponent for you? I don't. What does that mean? Just I don't know. <laughs> like a, I guess it's like a perfect matchup. Yeah. For for your return. Um. Yeah, I think any opponent, you know, I didn't care who it was, but um, yeah, I think she's a good matchup for me, and uh, you know, I I look forward to sharing the cage with her. Um, you said that you've gonna you're gonna bounce between flyweight and strawweight. Um, yeah. it, are you just kind of gonna wait until after Saturday to kind of like before you make your next move? Um, I think I want to go down to strawweight. I just think that that's where you know I think uh, I fit. Um, and I can't wait to go back down once I'm done with this fight. Uh, I just wanted to get my foot back in the door and just kind of focus on getting back to competition and um, not really worry about the weight cut, make sure that my body was healthy. I wasn't in a calorie deficit the entire camp, so that's always nice, right? Um, and then, you know, coming into fight week, I don't really have to stress too much about the weight cut, um, so that's nice too. Um, so yeah, next time I'll be, but you know what? I look like, I, I like the challenge of like getting back down to my natural weight class and, and being lean and fast and stuff like that. So, um, yeah. And you know, speaking of that, uh, that, that division, uh, finally for me, there isn't a clear cut next person to fight Zhang, Zhang Wei Um, do you feel with like a dominant win on Saturday, your name gets kind of thrown right into that mix? Um, well, I definitely want to get a dominant win. I want to get a finish. I always look to finish. Um, we'll see. Um, I don't really know. Like, that's up to the promotion. I just like to do my job, and then that's it. They could do whatever they want. But I know that if I keep winning, it's just a matter of time before I'm holding the belt, right? So I just got to do my job. That's all I focus on. And that's all that matters. Thank you, and welcome back. Thank you. I just have one hopefully fun question. I know you were talking about how you weren't even able to really train during that time. Yeah. Did you pick up any new hobbies? <laughs> um, well, I'm really, I love fitness just in general, so I'm always working out. I like to hike. I like to run mountains and stuff like that. Um, so I don't think that, I don't really, like, I would mountain bike and stuff like that. I would go biking, cycling all the time, swimming. I would try to do everything that I could just to stay in, like, really good shape. Um, I just like being an athlete overall. Like, if I wasn't doing this, I'd probably be, like, a triathlete or something like that, something crazy. Um, but um, I don't think I picked up any hobbies, though. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. I know, I know you want to get back to 115, but you also want to stay active. You know, if mm -hmm. if 115 is having a hard time finding fights, would you would you step back up and take a fight? At this yeah, position? so I don't mind doing that either. But obviously, you know, I want to wh whenever I'm fighting, I want to just make sure that I'm gonna get to you know the, the a title shot eventually. You know, if someone was like. Say for instance, you know they had a good matchup for me, and I want, you know, and they were like a top 125er or something like that. I wouldn't mind taking that one too. You know what I mean? So, um, just depends. Yeah. And I know you said earlier, and I hope I don't misquote it. You said you want to get back. You want to get back to see what you see yourself destined to be. Yeah. What do you see yourself destined to be? Uh, I think I'm going to be a champion, and um, you know, I think. I can't wait to get the belt and then defend as many times as I can. And then if, you know, 
because a lot of people like to focus on like the whole double champ or whatever, maybe. I think it's really cool when you have a champ that's so dominant in their division and they defend multiple times. I want to defend my belt multiple times before I go back, like up to flyway and do all that stuff. So, um, but yeah. Okay. Obviously, think, you're, you're very dominant in your wrestling. You know, a lot of times your opponents just seem to say, oh, that's that's her one thing. That's her one trick. Mm-hmm. If, Mon- if Montana's coming in there thinking, like, okay, obviously she's just going to try to take me down. She's going to try to wrestle. Would that be a mistake on her part to only expect wrestling coming from you? If she wants to do what? Sorry. If she's, if she's thinking you're only going to be tr- coming in trying to wrestle her. Yeah. Would that be a mistake on her part? I mean, I think I'm comfortable everywhere. So, you know, uh... I think, uh, I don't know, I think I'm a well-rounded fighter. I think these people just don't really see much of my stand-up because I'm always taking them down, and they can't stop it. So, I mean, uh, I think I just, she could, should expect a mixed martial arts fight because we're fighting, <laughs> you know? Every fight stands or starts standing, so. I know a lot of times fighters say the mental, the mental side of, of the fighting is just as important, if not maybe bigger than the physical side of things. With dealing with the injuries and the time away, do you feel that you're mentally stronger than you were ever before now that you've had this time to really think about fighting and thinking about getting back into the cage? Yeah, I definitely think that I'm mentally stronger. I've always been mentally strong, I'm, but I think mindset's everything, and I think, you know, along the way... Um, you learn to have a good mindset even through tough times, you know, and you have to have a good support system too. And I definitely have that. I have a good family, a good boyfriend. So it's like, I mean, I, I have the support system that I need to get through tough times, you know. What's the biggest thing that you think you've learned about yourself in this time away? Um, I don't know. I think that I'm just, I don't give up at all. I mean, it's like, I already knew that, but it's, it's like, a, it's been a journey. So for me, I'm like, wow. I, when I look at it, if I was to look at it from the outside, it would be a lot different, but it's me. You know what I mean? So I don't see it that way. But if I were to look at it from outside, I'd see it was, I would say it was more, it was pretty inspiring. And then last thing for me, I guess, keys to the victory. What needs to happen on Saturday to make sure that you get your arm raised? Um, I just got to be me. Be relentless, you know. Um, be the fighter that I am. Um, and, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Just be me. Awesome. Best of luck on Saturday. Thank you. Hey, Tatiana over here. I just wanted to know um, how big of an influence has Patchy been and your comeback and, like, your career. Obviously, we see you supporting him when he gets in there. Yeah. So, I mean, how cool is it going to be to have, you know, him in your corner this time? Um, it's going to be great. It's going to be a great, uh, a great um, moment for us, um, regardless of anything. You know, I just want to share that moment with him. Um, he's very supportive of me. I've never had anybody support me the way he does. So I'm excited to have someone like that in my corner. That's awesome. And do you consider yourself a sneakerhead? I see the panda dunk. <laughs> Now. Yeah, I love I love sneakers. I love a good sneaker. <laughs> yeah, because I, I like I know Casey O'Neill's big into sneakers. So oh like, yeah. Do you guys have a little bit of competitive thing going? <laughs> no, <laughs> no. And one more question for me. Um, I know you had mentioned in the past about how you like you had mentioned Cowboy Cerrone and how you know you thought it was cool that he was open to admitting that he was afraid before he went into the octagon yeah. sometimes. Mm-hmm. Has there been a moment in your career where you've been afraid to get in there at all? Um, no, but I don't, I, I, um, I don't know. It's the weirdest thing, like things that are, should be scary to me are not really scary. Like um, when I found out I had cancer, like most people would be scared. I didn't feel scared. Um, I think if I were to say what I, my biggest fear would be, would be just not to, like one day I just gave up on something that's my biggest fear but I would never do that so um but yeah so I think I was very um I said that about Cowboy Cerrone because like if I was a man and you know what I mean and I was stepped into the cage I'd feel like you know exposing that to my opponent I'd feel a little bit like I guess insecure but so yeah that's why I said that
dela que vai tentar falar uma, uma, uma palavra em português, mas não quer revelar qual é a palavra, para não estragar a surpresa. Vamos lá. Tudo em ordem? Pronto? Pronto. Well, welcome back. How are you feeling? Bem-vindo novamente. Como é que está se sentindo? Bem, é sempre um prazer estar em Las Vegas novamente, aqui onde tudo começou. Então, para mim, é uma cidade muito especial. Aqui eu tenho várias vitórias e eu espero continuar no caminho delas. Um, feeling great. I mean, it's always good to be back in Las Vegas where everything began. Uh, I have very good memories of victories and I hope to continue in that path. Are you superstitious at all? Do you feel like if you've won at, at one venue that you'll always win at the venue? Like, do you really pay attention to that when you're accepting fights? Você chega a ser supersticioso, supersticioso a, a ponto de falar assim, pô, aqui eu ganhei. Então, bora continuar lutando aqui, porque aqui eu, seja uma arena, uma cidade, você chega até essa superstição? Não, mas te trazer boas recordações é sempre importante, né? Se você sente bem no local, isso que é importante. Don't get to be, I mean, superstitious, no, but, I mean, a place, bringing it back good memories is always important. So that's why I feel. And it's been a little bit since you fought last. Uh, was that by choice? Did you want to take a little bit of time off, or did you hope to get back a little sooner? É, e também faz um tempinho que você lutou, então é, isso foi uma coisa que estava planejada. Você só queria dar uma descansada, queria ter lutado antes, talvez não conseguiu. Como é que foi? Bem, eu queria ter lutado antes. Tentei de várias maneiras, é, me dispus para a organização aceitar algumas lutas que caíram ano passado, só que não aconteceu. É, Vou lutar agora, sou grato a Deus pela oportunidade, ao UFC, e estou muito bem preparado para dar um grande show sábado. Um, I wanted to fight sooner. I actually presented myself to your organization and said I'm ready to go. I tried to put myself out to uh, certain fights that actually didn't go through, so I just wanted to fill in. Um, but at that point, a uh, promotion didn't want it, but just very grateful to be here again and just uh, to be fighting again. What did you think about the name Brendan when you heard that would be your next opponent? O que, que você achou do nome Brandon Allen quando você viu? É ele. Uh, o Brandon é um grande atleta, tem uma sequência boa de vitórias na organização. Uh, sei que a luta vai ser bem difícil, mas estou muito bem preparado e quero continuar no caminho das vitórias e isso que eu vou fazer sábado. Vencer mais uma luta para invadir de vez o, o top da categoria. Um, Brandon é um grande atleta, um, coming in from a, a good winning stretch in the, in the, the promotion. But I mean, I'm going to go out there on Saturday and just do my job. I feel very prepared, very ready to go and uh, to invade the top of the rankings. What sort of fight are you expecting from him? E que tipo de luta você espera dele? Uh, há pouco tempo ele me fez um desafio de chão, né? Falou que queria medir forças. Eu espero que ele cumpra a palavra dele, né? Vamos fazer uma guerra de chão e ver quem tem o melhor jiu-jitsu da divisão. Um, not too long ago, he actually uh, posed a challenge, a ground challenge to me. So, see who's going to be, uh, who would win on the ground. So, I hope he actually stands up to his word and let's take this underground and see who's got the best jiu-jitsu in the division. And what are your keys to victory? E quais são as suas chaves para a vitória? Acredito que a paciência seja a primeira virtude aí para fazer uma boa luta, já que os dois atletas estão muito bem preparados tecnicamente. Então, aquele que conseguir fazer o outro errar primeiro, começar a luta vencendo, vai conduzir a luta o restante dos rounds. Então, acredito que isso eu devo fazer para poder sair vitória do sábado. I think patience is going to be the primary virtue um, in this instance because um, great athletes, very well prepared. So I, I think the one that makes the, to, uh, that, uh, that allows the other one to make a first mistake will end up controlling the fight and taking it um, in further rounds. So I think this is what we're going to see, patience, and that's what you're going to see Saturday for a great fight. And my final question, I heard a story about your nickname. Let me see if I can pronounce it correctly. Sergei Pano, the fruit of Brazil. I hear that it's because of your head. Can you tell me if that's true and how that came about? And if I said that right? Sergi Pano. Sergi Pano. Ah, oh. Pano. Sergi Pano. 
Senhor de pano. <risos> Senhor Então, sobre o seu apelido, é, gostaria de saber exatamente de onde veio, é, gostaria de saber se ela pronunciou correto, a gente... E é, a origem, eu gostaria de saber de onde é que veio o seu, o seu apelido. Bem, eu comecei muito novo nas artes marciais, é, no jiu-jitsu, e é comum no meio do jiu-jitsu colocar apelidos. Então o pessoal falou que eu parecia com as pessoas do estado de Sergipe, e aí ficou sergipano, mas eu sou mineiro de Montes Claros, crescido <risos> é, minha vida toda em Minas Gerais, Outro estado do Brasil. It's very common in the world of jiu-jitsu to actually for people to give you a nickname when you walk into the gym. Well, when I came into the gym, people looked at me and said, you look like you're from Sergipe, one of our states. So the thing is, I'm not from Sergipe. I'm from Minas Gerais, specifically from the town of Montes Claros, a completely different place. But they said I look like one of them, and it stuck So the rumor that your it was because of the fruit and the size of your head is not correct. É o boato de que tinha alguma coisa a ver com uma fruta e a e o tamanho da sua cabeça não procede? Ah, uh, não, não, não. <laughs> Pessoal, é, na época era mais por fisionomia mesmo se parecer. Até o pessoal de Sergipe fala que eu pareço bastante com o pessoal de lá, né? Mas, assim, lógico que várias pessoas criam várias novas histórias, né? Mas essa é a verdadeira história que eu estou contando. Não, has absolutely nothing to do with that. Actually, people from Sergipe tell me that I do look like I'm from there. But it has nothing to do with it. Of course, people come up with stories all the time. But the truth is the story that I'm telling you right now. That is the truth. Thank you. Obrigado. A risada que ele deu. Nossa? É, Zé? Thank you. Hello, hi. Welcome back. How are you feeling? Um, I feel good. You know, I mean, really, I'm just ready to go home at this point, but I feel good. Home, like back to the hotel or home home? Airbnb, yeah. Okay. 
Oh, you see, you had an Airbnb. Is that a perk of being a main event? No, that's me taking care of myself, taking care of my body and giving me everything I need to put myself in the best position possible to get the job done. So what does the Airbnb do for you? Is it because you can cook your own food? You have your own space? What's so I got my nutritionist here right now. Um, I have my boxing coach, Brian Hall from Memphis, my strength and conditioning coach, Skeisha, Mike Skeisha from uh, Extreme Studio Performance in Dallas. Uh, my brother is there. My wife is there. Uh, Dr. Mann from Reform Sports Re Rehab is going to be here soon. Um, I'm just taking care of myself, man. Uh, I just, you do champion shit, you get champion results. So I'm trying to do champion shit. And this is the first fight of the year for you, and it's a main event. Where do you go from here? Win this. What's the next goal for this year? The next goal, the next goal is simple. You know, I, I, I want something. I want something. And I, I'm coming for it. You're going to wait to say it after the fight, or you can tell us now? I, mean, I know what it is, but we've got to hear you say it. Um, what were your thoughts when you got the name for your opponent? Uh, the thoughts that I always have, I suppose, and which I don't care. I mean, it's just the name that came up. Uh, coach felt pretty good about it. Um, it really don't matter. We almost this fight almost didn't happen, but you know, I still feel good about it. Why didn't fight? Why did the fight almost not happen? Well, we was gonna. We was on call for the um, the situation with the belt. So. So, are you happy that it didn't happen? I mean, are you? What are your thoughts on the way it, it did end up playing out for you? Why would Why would I be happy about not getting a title fight? You get a chance to show no. off. I don't know. No, I don't, no. I I don't I I don't. I don't do this to show off. I don't do this to fight for no reason. I want what I want so I can get out when I can get out. You know, I want, I want to get in and out. And the longer it takes me to get there, the longer I got to stay. What kind of fight are you expecting from him? I haven't thought about it, to be honest. I mean, I really don't care. I just, me, it's going to be a lot of new YouTube comments. <laughs> Ryan, I don't care, Span. Y'all hear this shit a lot. <laughs> but, I mean, really, it don't matter to me. Um, I'm just going to be me, have fun, like I always do. Everything else lines up. And what are your keys to victory? Have fun. Thank you. Let me show you. This is, this is how, how you do it, by the way. There That's my man, like there a fine wine. So do you envision with the, the win here, do you at least swap positions? And we're talking top five, or do you think with a definitive win here, that should get you back into that title contention nod again? Um... Preferably, preferably, I, like I said, the longer it takes me to get to where I'm trying to go, so the sooner they can give it to me that, the sooner I can take over, you know what I'm saying? And my plan is to get the belt, then I'll leave it for Kennedy. When, when Kennedy is ready, I'll either go up or I'll be done. You guys have always been such great teammates there at that place. It's, that's refreshing to that's hear. That's my brother. <laughs> is that something that you guys talk about in advance? Like, you know, 100%. just like when you're, when you're sweating in the gym, you know, you guys dream, daydream. Is this the sort of thing 100%. you guys talk about? We, We've been in the mats. I have a key to the gym now. Yeah. Congrats. So we've been in the gym just us by ourselves having these conversations. Like, we, we got a plan. We, we know what we're going to do. Coach got a, a vision and he got a path mapped out for us. And we're going to take over. You know, in your last, looking at your last two wins, you know, against Kudalaba, it was the, your patented guillotine choke, but then your last one was off strikes. When you see Krylov, Krylov across the cage, where do you see the best advantage? I think it's pronounced Krylov. Krylov, Krylov? I think. Yeah. I go back and forth, I, but I pronounce everything wrong. Yeah, I try to get it as right as possible. <laughs> I mean, do you envision that with his style that the striking is going to be where you're, you're going to excel, or do you think that he gives I don't know his style, point? brother. I don't, I don't know what he's going to do. I don't care what he's going to try to do. I just know if I have fun and I'll be calm, I'll see everything. So even if uh, you go in there, you guys immediately stand in the middle of the cage and you're taking some shots, that's still fun for you, isn't it? Taking some strikes just to wake you up and get you get you excited to to hit back with somebody is that fun part of the fun or is it just you want to go in there and have a complete dominant show and that's what makes it fun? How how, how long have we been? I've been here doing this quite a while. Quite a while. Is anything about me that you've ever seen would make you think that I enjoy that? <laughs> well, I know you like to hurt people, so you maybe maybe. Well, 
just because I like to hurt people don't mean I like to get hurt. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's different. No, I'm good. Like I said, I want to get in and get out, brother. I, I want to get out with all my faculties intact. That's awesome. I see the, uh, the Rubik's Cube up there. You, mm-hmm. you still working on your Rubik's game? Uh, yeah, I'm trying. You know what I'm saying? I got a little over... A little overzealous a little bit. I, I got like a five by five. We have to put that bad boy in the closet. We gonna, we gonna, we ain't ready for it yet. I go to four by four or something. But yeah, I'm getting better. I'm, I'm a lot faster. I'm gonna learn some more uh, algorithms to see if I can speed it up. I want to get it down to seconds. Like I'm still at like maybe two minutes, depending on how I feel that day. So. Can you do it one handed? Like you see some of the. I ain't that cold. No. <laughs> That's a whole that, I've been seeing people do this and like they'll turn it with their bottom hand and Yeah yeah. Nah, I gotta I gotta figure all that out. I ain't, I ain't got that yet. That's awesome. Best of luck on Saturday. Thank you, I appreciate it. Hey Ryan. Um when you said that you were on call for uh, US- What's your name, brother? I ain't never seen you before. Oh, oh yeah. Alex. I can't it's light. <laughs> um when when you said that you were on call for the light heavyweight title fight, did it did that mean that uh if Jamal didn't accept you were next up? Oh, no, they called me before all that. They called me before it announced that he vacated. Uh-huh. Yeah. So uh, I was uh, going to fight, I want to say, Jan at first. And then from there, they was gonna, uh, I, I was going to fight for the number one, guaranteed. And then I'll fight the winner for a, at the time, it was an interim belt. So Magomed and Glover was going to fight for the interim. And then I was going to fight for number one because they already knew that, you know, homie was going to be out for a while. And this... This was after you knocked out Dominic Reyes. Yeah. So you so you were gonna. Just yeah, it was like two weeks before the fight. Damn. So you were gonna turn right, turn right back around yeah. and fight. Yeah. Um, and then I guess finally for me, you know, you're gonna say that you know if Kennedy makes his way up the rankings, when when he he he, he makes his way up the rankings, uh, you go up to heavyweight. I don't know if, if people have not seen you in person. You are a huge human being. So I mean, is is I mean, would you want to go to heavyweight? You know, I'm thinking about it. I really, I really want to go back to 85. I got some work that that we didn't that we didn't finish there. You know, I was kind of unceremoniously. I didn't fuck that word up. Uh, you know, got put in 205 to come here. So I don't know. He hates it, but you know, how, I either go up or down. We'll see. How in how in the hell is that physically possible for you to make middle weight? I've done it. <laughs> I mean, it is. You're, I mean, you ask how it's possible. I've done it. <laughs> like, I didn't say it was fun, but I've done it. <laughs> I mean, goddamn, you are huge. You're you're big. <laughs> and you sound like him. <laughs> oh, that's he said he'll quit if I want to go to eighty-five. <laughs> uh, I quit too. <laughs> Pleasant. Thanks, man. No problem. Does the beard help the chin? You're going to keep growing out the beard? I like it. It's nice and uh, I don't know. a lot bigger than last time we saw it. I just don't have time to save. I don't give a, I, if anything, I'll cut it the night before. We'll see. Right, you're going to shave for fight night? I'll talk, I'll talk to my wife and daughter and see if they want me to keep it. It's ultimately her. That's pretty much right? how it goes. Yeah. But, I, you know, whatever. It don't, it don't, it's not like a strategic advantage or anything like that. Awesome. All right, we got one more? Yeah, I got one more. Last time I talked to you, I asked you what's the song you listen to and nobody's around. You said I listen to what my kids listen to. We talked about Encanto. You know, they don't we don't talk about Bruno. So what do you got what do you got on the playlist right now? Let's see. Um my King Superman playlist is what I'm using right now. Um, but what I got weird on here, I don't think I got anything. Everything is a player shit, so uh, Memphis. Memphis. Nah. Nah, this one's pretty good. Um, I got half on the sack by 3-6 Mafia <laughs> on my workout playlist. So, I, I mean, that, maybe that's weird. Nah, <laughs> triple six. <laughs> the thing is, they're making a comeback. All these hey. TikTok kids are just finding out about triple six. Oh, no fucking way. <laughs> oh, man. I, I hope they do, though. They, that, that's what shit. But, yeah, that's the weirdest thing I got right now is half on the sack. Yeah. All right, thank y'all.
build an even bigger, you gotta be even extra. Yeah, you don't have to So that's why when I finish writing, I'm gonna let you look at it. Or she's the question with Bajka. Look like everything we had and say that along the middle, this, 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 and then we'll go from there and figure out how to get that. So are you gonna also help kind of pull different stuff like Instagram stuff? Welcome back. How are you feeling? Uh, I'm great. Thank you. So how does it feel to be main event? Has fight week felt any different? Does preparation feel any different? Какие ощущения насчет того, что ты главное событие? Какие-то приготовления другие или какие-то чувства у тебя другие ты испытываешь? Also it's same, but it's a big deal for me. It's first main event in UFC and uh, uh, I feel myself great. Uh, I have a great camp. Uh, Good acclimatization, and uh, now I wait in Saturday. It's kind of a big week for Ukrainian fighters because there's two Ukrainian fighters main eventing two major MMA organizations this week. Does that make you feel good about um, the position that you're at? Это большая неделя для бойцов из Украины, потому что в двух больших организациях два бойца из Украины сражаются в главном событии. Как ты по этому поводу себя чувствуешь и вообще что хочешь сказать, что это значит для такой страны как Украина? Я думаю, что в целом все постсоветское пространство будет наблюдать за ММА в эти выходные, поддерживать Ярослава Амосова, поддерживать меня. И для меня нет разделения в плане людей. Украина, Россия – это действительно одна нация, если кто-то не знал. Поэтому я с радостью буду наблюдать за боем Ярослава Амосова, если это не пересечется с нашим поединком, и у меня будет такая возможность, и желаю ему удачи. I think that all the people and all the countries of the former Soviet Union are going to be watching MMA this weekend. Everyone's going to be rooting for me. Everyone's going to be rooting for Yaroslav Amosov. So it's a very important weekend. And uh, honestly, uh, in case you don't know, I don't divide whether it's you know Russian people, Ukrainian people. We're all one nation. In case you didn't know that, so the important the important thing is people are going to be watching us. People are going to be supporting us. So it's it's a very important weekend. And I will also try and follow his fight if I can. If it doesn't con conflict with my time, so if I have a chance to watch his fight, I will. I'll root for him. I hope that he wins. And it's been, I believe, October since you fought last. Did you want to get back a little bit sooner or were you happy to have a little bit of a uh, break? В октябре последний раз мы тебя видели, достаточно длинное время после последнего боя. Ты хотел вернуться чуть быстрее или тебе понравилось то, что вот такое длинное время ты отдыхал? I don't think about this long time uh, because when I come after my last fight, uh, I'm rest maybe one or two weeks and start training, uh, have good camp, it's three months. Uh, it's a uh, good uh, time for prepare, it's all be good. And uh, what, what did you think when you got the name Ryan Span? Uh, also, I won't fight with guys who stay in hire me in writing uh, because I won't uh, will do a contender fight. Uh, but uh, when uh, my manager say me you have uh, main event with Ryan Spain, first for me, what I listen, it's main event, it's be good. Uh, that's why Spain, it's okay. He's a tough guy, it's be interesting fight. He seems to say he's not really paying attention to anything about you, hasn't really looked into you at all. Do you think that he's making a, a bad decision doing that by not researching you a little bit? Он говорит, что он не особо следил за тем, как ты бился до этого, какие у тебя были бои, какой у тебя рекорд, он как бы не особо смотрит то, что ты делал, чем ты занимался. Как ты думаешь, он ошиб ошибку он делает ошибку, что он не смотрит на тебя как на хорошего бойца? I don't know. It's better for me. If he think I bet, it's good for me. Uh, after fight, we will see. What sort of fight are you expecting from him? Mm, I think it's be fast uh, and uh, strong and tough uh, fight. He have tough punch and uh, he will be try punch me. I must move, uh, punch him, kick him and uh, I think uh, I will be better.
And do you think uh, with a win over Ryan that could put you into title talk, or do you feel like you might need uh, one or two more fights before you're ready? Yeah, I think uh, uh, also I might, I, I must uh, will be one or two fight, uh, maybe one contender fight, but uh, this fight not give me title chance. It's also. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Nikita. Hey. Uh, just one quick one for you. Uh, it's been 17 fights. You were 17 fights in the UFC, and you finally got your first main event. Just how does that how, how does that make you feel? 17 боев ты уже провел в UFC, и наконец-то у тебя главное событие. Какие у тебя ощущения по этому поводу? Самые теплые и прекрасные ощущения. Это дает мне понять то, что я не стою на месте, то, что я двигаюсь, то, что организация видит мой мой прогресс и доверяет мне возглавлять турнир. Это очень приятно для меня. It's a great feeling. It's really warm feelings. It means that I'm moving forward. I'm progressing. I'm not standing in one place. It means that the organization sees what I'm doing and, and believes in me and trusts in me to main event this uh, such an important organization. So I think it's great. I feel great about it. Was there ever a thought in the back of your head that maybe I won't get a main event ever? I just I just keep going. Когда-нибудь ты думал о том, что ну вот я дерусь, дерусь, а мне никак не дают главное событие? Может мне его и не дадут вообще, или ты просто двигался вперед? Maybe. Uh... Но я никогда не стремлюсь что-то загадывать или планировать. Мне нравится, если я открываю турнир, это хорошо. Если у меня первый бой в прилимах, замечательно. Если я закрываю турнир, ну, это еще лучше. Но от этого мой настрой на бой не меняется. I don't like to think ahead or kind of overthink that, why it happens that way. If I'm opening the fight card, great, that's important. If I'm closing the fight guard, even, card, even better. The thing is, that's, that's not what it's about. It just, just means that I'm doing the right thing. I mean, where did the minor come from? Откуда у тебя такая кликуха, minor? From my native land, uh, my family, my father is minor, my grandfather is minor, I am minor, I am working mine. That's why uh, one times I think minor is better like Al Capone. Awesome, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
So I see you up there. You're wearing shorts. You must be loving this Vegas weather, then, huh? Deve ver você de shorts. Deve estar adorando o clima em Las Vegas, né? Pois é. é. Fui na onda do meu amigo Pezão. É, a gente olhou um solzinho ali. Ele falou: Não, tá tranquilo. Vamos sair, vamos sair. A gente saiu correndo do hotel e neve agora. Yeah, uh, I decided to follow the advice of my great friend Pezão back there, that just uh, said, "Oh, we saw some sun kind of peeking out the clouds." So it's going to be fine. Come, well, that's where here we are. Eu também estou acostumado com o clima da Flórida, muito calor. Aí. <laughs> And I'm used to the Florida weather, very hot, so it's not cool. <laughs> But we're just a few days out of uh, your fight. How are you feeling? How's the body feeling? How's the mental side? How are you feeling coming into this fight? É, falta um pouco de dias para a tua luta. Como é que você está sentindo? Como é que está a preparação mental? Como é que está a parte física? Como é que você está? Estou me sentindo muito bem, né? Estou é, desde setembro morando nos Estados Unidos. Estou treinando todos os dias. Treinei todo Natal, Ano Novo, sem parar. Então, estou me sentindo muito bem. Estou pronto para essa vitória, para poder dar a volta por cima dentro do UFC, né? Eu acho que é uma questão que todo mundo está perguntando como está a minha parte mental por causa das últimas derrotas, mas isso já foi, é, foi aprendizado e agora eu estou pronto para uma nova história dentro do UFC. Um, feeling great, uh, I mean, living in Florida since September, um, training every day, uh, train throughout Christmas and, and New Year's as well. Um, I think I'm ready to make a comeback and actually turn things around for me um, here in the UFC. Um, I think a lot of people ask the question on the mental side because of the losses that I've had. Uh, that's behind me. And uh, it just is a matter of improving and, and, and really turning things around and, and building a different, and I'm ready to build a different story here in the UFC. That's great to hear. And I did want to bring up the, 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 the previous losses. Were there still some things that you were able to take away from those? I mean, they were good fights, you know, they had the, each had their moments, but were there things that you were to, able to take away from that to work towards going into this fight? É, é bom escutar que você tá, que você se sente assim, e eu gostaria de voltar um pouco na, no que aconteceu nas últimas lutas. Você, você acha que apesar, você teve lutas, que teve, teve momentos importantes na luta, você pode tirar alguma coisa dessas lutas para, para as lutas futuras? Teve, teve horas ali que você se sentiu bem e, e foram lutas duras e só o resultado que não foi bom. É, o que, que você tira delas como aprendizado? Se tem um aprendizado para, para o futuro? Com certeza, né? Tanto os momentos bons quanto os momentos ruins que eu tive nas últimas lutas né, serviu de alguma forma para algum aprendizado. né? É, aquilo que eu acertei, a gente tem procurado dar ênfase e continuar fazendo, e aquilo que eu errei a gente tem buscado corrigir desde que eu cheguei aqui nos Estados Unidos. né? Então foram lutas de muito aprendizado, e tenho buscado ser melhor a cada dia, um atleta melhor a cada dia, uma pessoa melhor a cada dia, e eu tenho certeza que isso está acontecendo, e sábado vocês vão ver, verão novo Augusto Sakai. Um... It's true. For every fight, there are moments that you, um, there are good moments, there are bad moments, things you can take away uh, from it. It's always a learning experience. I would say that there are things that I did well that we actually emphasized, and there were things that were not done so well that we need to work on. Um, what you can see, you can rest assured, that we actually been working very hard at it, training very hard to improve. I becoming a better athlete, becoming a better person. Um, you see that on Saturday, a new Augusta Sakai. And I was going to say, you know, even with coming in with the losses, you're third from the top, the fight, the only heavyweight fight of the night. What does that say to you, the confidence that the UFC has in you to put you still so high at the top of the bill? E falando sobre é, a tua trajetória e o que pode ter acontecido no passado, mesmo assim com derrotas, você vem numa luta que está ali quase quase no topo do do card. Quer dizer, o que, que isso fala sobre a confiança que a organização tem que você pode trazer uma boa luta e que oferece alguma coisa para você? É, entrei no UFC, fiz quatro, 
quatro vitórias seguidas, é, dois main events, é, nunca recusei uma luta, é, me considero um, um funcionário exemplar para o UFC, aonde é, quer que eu vá, seja aqui nos Estados Unidos, no Brasil, seja em programa de TV, seja lutando, seja em qualquer lugar que eu esteja, eu tento representar o UFC da melhor forma possível e eu acho que o UFC consegue enxergar isso. É claro que eu preciso da vitória para me manter aqui, para continuar aqui, mas eu estando no card principal, mesmo depois de uma sequência de derrotas, mostro o quanto o UFC gosta do meu trabalho e gosta que eu esteja aqui. Então, fico muito feliz com essa oportunidade e, cara, vou agarrar com unhas e dentes essa nova oportunidade que eles estão me dando. Um, I started the UFC with four wins. Um, I had uh, too many events as well. Um, I think that I, no matter what I've done, whether it's fighting, whether it's going to a television show, whether it's being in an interview or being asked for any event, I've always represented and been, been proud of representing the UFC. Uh, I think I'm a model employee of the UFC, so to speak. And uh, if for them to see, to, to, to actually, uh, you know, even with the with the losses, to be able to 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 be in a uh, in the main card. I mean, it's it's I well, I understand that the win the win has to come in order for us to stay here and to keep to be to stay with the organization. But for them to have seen that, even though there were losses, it it, it means that they're actually looking at this and that they see me for where I am. Does it feel like you said you're putting that pressure and you want you know you have to get this win? Do you do you feel in a sense that you are fighting for your job in this one? Do you feel the pressure of those losses that really? need to catapult you to get this win? Você sente a pressão é, da, da trajetória recente, da, de, de derrotas, você sente que tem uma pressão em que você está lutando pelo teu emprego, ou seja, que você precisa dessa vitória para te catapultar dentro da dentro da organização? Já senti mais. É, no passado senti um pouco mais isso, mas hoje não. É, tenho certeza que fiz um belo treinamento, é, eu sei o meu valor, eu sei o quanto eu posso representar ainda dentro do UFC. É, tenho 31 anos, é, já fiz muito aqui dentro do UFC, mas eu quero fazer muito mais. Então, hoje eu não tomo isso como pressão. né? O que passou foi aprendizado. E, cara, quero escrever uma nova história, quero embalar uma nova sequência de vitórias aí e quero continuar na organização tranquilo. Mas não tomo isso como pressão. É, para mim, tá, tá natural. Eu nasci para isso. Sou predestinado para estar aqui no UFC e fazer meu trabalho. Um, I felt that pressure way more before. I don't feel um, the pressure anymore as much as I felt in the past. I think that, that whatever whatever happened is past. Um, I, as I said, I'm here to actually write a different history. I've worked very hard to, to be in this position anymore. I do feel that I'm not I'm used to it. I've been I've been here before. Um, and I, I really felt it before. I don't, I don't pressure myself in that, in that sense. I'm not beating myself around for it. Um, and I want to get into, get a win, get into a, a new win streak uh, to show things for. I know how much I'm worth. I know my valor as a person, and um, I want to write a different history of the UFC. That's great. So they give you Maze for this fight. What are your thoughts on him as an opponent when you got that name? And where is he dangerous? And what are you expecting him to bring out there in the octagon? É, quando você descobriu quem era o oponente, como é que você vê ele como adversário? O que, que você acha que, que ele traz para dentro do octógono? Ele tem as qualidades dele. É, gosta de jogar na distância. Se ele ficar com espaço dentro do octógono, ele vai encaixar o jogo dele. Mas acho que eu tenho o jogo perfeito para ganhar dele. E estou pronto para isso. Um, Good athlete, seen I've seen his uh, his strength. So he likes to play with distance. If he if you give him distance, he's gonna work you. Um, he's gonna be able to actually and he kind of impose his rhythm. Um, but I do have the I think I have the perfect game plan and the perfect game um, to face him straight up and to come out with a win. And is just getting a win enough to start that win streak, or do you really need to go out there and get a definitive finish to really start that win streak off for yourself? You want victory, simples, want victory, como que seja ela é suficiente para você para você entrar naquele é, nessa nova sequência de vitórias na tua cabeça é, com confiança ou você acha que realmente precisa ser uma vitória dominante sair daqui com uma finalização com certeza qualquer vitória seja ela por nocaute finalização ou por pontos eu estou pronto para lutar os três rounds quero acabar com a luta o quanto antes mas a forma como a vitória vai vir não importa eu só quero a vitória e 
indiferente como seja, vai ser vitória. Surely, I think a win by knockout, finish, uh, submitting him, um, or even my, my decision. I mean, any win is important. Uh, I'm ready for the three rounds if need be, and I'm just confident that I'm going to come out with the win. So if you get the win, is the object to just stay busy for the rest of the year to try to ride the momentum? And how many more fights are you hoping to get by the end of the year? E você saindo com uma vitória, o objetivo então é ficar ocupado o máximo possível e lutar o máximo possível esse ano. Como você vê o ano de 2023 em termos de luta, volume de lutas? Meu foco está nessa luta agora, é 100% focado em vencer essa luta. E depois disso eu consigo fazer mais duas lutas durante o ano, né? fechando 2023 com três lutas, vai ser o cenário perfeito. Uh, my focus right now is actually on this fight, to win this fight, to actually go out there and get a win. Um, but if um, towards, uh, throughout 2023, if I'm able to get two more fights and finish the year with three fights, I think that's a perfect scenario. Awesome. And last thing for me, just thinking about Saturday, what are your keys to the victory? What needs to happen to make sure you get your hands raised on Saturday night? Última pergunta minha, é, pensando agora no sábado, quais são as tuas chaves para a vitória? O que, que você acha que você precisa fazer sábado para sair do teu braço levantado? Soltar o meu jogo. É, acho que esse é o principal. É, fazer tudo aquilo que eu treinei e com certeza a vitória está nisso. Né? É, essa é a chave principal e isso vai acontecer. Unlock my game. Everything that we, that we train for, I mean, everything we plan for, I just need to, you know, put it out there and just make everything that we train for uh, happen. And that's what, uh, that's what we need for a win. That's what's going to happen. Thank you so much. Yeah. What, uh, what's the biggest thing you've taken away from American Top Team since moving there? Qual que é a coisa que você mais distraiu de positivo? O que, que você mais tira de lição por estar no American Top Team depois que você mudou para a Flórida? Treinar lá em alto nível, é, todos os dias, bom tre bons treinadores, é, bons parceiros de treino. Temos um time muito bom lá de pesos pesados. Então, é todo dia treino duro e isso tem sido o melhor para mim. Um, high level training, just high level training, great coaches, amazing uh, training partners as well, good heavyweights too. So I just think that the, the entire thing there, that the great, have, a, have a great team, and this has been the, great, the, 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 um, the greatest takeaway I have from. And then when you look back on your record, I remember watching you in Vancouver, and you actually have a win over Marcin Tabura, who's won, I think, seven out of his last eight. So do you look back on certain fights like that and be like, hey, man, I can still be at the top of this division? É, eu me lembro da tua luta contra o Marcin Tibura lá em Vancouver. Eu me lembro, porra, você é um cara que aí com sete vitórias nas últimas oito, nas últimas oito lutas. Então, porra, você olha para uma luta como essa, quando você olha no teu passado e fala, porra, olha, olha, cara, eu tenho tudo que é necessário. Sim, é, o UFC postou essa semana a luta em Vancouver. Tenho assistido muito ela. E isso me traz um sentimento muito bom, porque... Aquela luta eu fiz tudo perfeito, soltei meu jogo e eu sei que eu tenho potencial para isso. Eu sei que no sábado, se eu fizer o mesmo, eu vou sair vitorioso. Então, caramba, tô tô empolgado com isso. Um, yeah, the, I, I saw that actually the, the UFC actually put that fight out uh, for people to watch in Vancouver. It just gives me such a great feeling to, to go back and that like I was able to actually, you know, do my thing, let it loose, unlock that my, my game, as I mentioned, just kind of let go the great play, game plan. And that's why. I mean, that gives me a good feeling, and I, I have a very good feeling about it. I'm very, very excited about this fight on Saturday because of that. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Cool? Thank you.
Good. Mike, how you doing, brother? Great, man. How you doing? I'm good, man. The, the biggest thing I'm going to start off for me, being a, a fellow Canadian that jumps off the page, you're fighting another Canadian. You know what I mean? Like, I want to see you guys get the exposure that you need and, you know, maybe fight somebody from a different country. I asked your opponent this question earlier. Do you think you guys are still going to be able to show off what Canadian MMA is like, you know, fighting one another? Yeah, so kind of a couple of things to address in there. Yeah, it's unfortunate I'm fighting another Canadian. I, I want as many of us in here uh, as as we can get, you know. Like, I, I've always loved watching Canadians fight in the UFC, so having, you know, having to fight a guy and, and only one of us getting to win is, is a little unfortunate. But uh, I'm not thinking about it too much past that. I think it's a great opportunity to show what M Canadian MMA is about because all you're going to see is Canadian MMA in this fight, right? So for the Canadian MMA fans, I think this is this is a cool one. This is, you know, the unofficial Canadian welterweight world title here, right? Like this is the two most highly ranked Canadian welterweights, I think, that are active right now. So uh, I think it's a kind of cool fight in that way. Um, but yeah, uh, hopefully we'll be able to scrap it out. And he's, he's kind of been a buddy of mine, so it will be cool after this fight, scrap it out and have a beer afterwards. Yeah, that's keep, what it was, keep it real Canadian style. Yeah, that's what he was kind of talking about. He was like, it's Ontario versus Quebec type deal. But how does it feel for you to potentially be the flag bearer for Canadian MMA right now? Because there's a lot of hype behind you right now, obviously coming off Contender Series, your win, you've done some grappling since then as well. So what is that like? Uh, I mean, I, I love that. Yeah, we, we don't have somebody right now that's like clearly leading the way for Canadians right now. I'm very happy to carry that torch and, and move forward. I, I plan on continuing to do that on Saturday. Again, unfortunately, it's against another Canadian. But uh, hopefully this will be the last Canadian I fight and we can just move forward, kind of Canada versus the rest of the world and, and lead a, a solid charge. We've got a really strong crop, crop of young fighters coming up in Canada. So uh, I expect to kind of lead a lead a good charge, especially from Ontario. And there's some kids that come out from Alberta to train with us a little bit too. <clears throat> I, think, uh, I think we're gonna see a big resurgence in Canadian MMA in the next few years. Awesome. How, I mean, I know you don't like looking too far ahead, but how active do you want to be this year? Definitely more active than, than next year. I'm already as active as I was last year. I'm hoping to get three in this year. That would be great. I want this one. Um, I'll probably need, you know, a couple weeks to just kind of chill out and train and drill after without a fight in mind. Just had that grappling match I was training to training for and, and competed in in December and then, you know, competed on a Friday and then Sunday was a hard competition day. We always, we always have a tradition of uh, the J January 1st, all the competitive black belts get together in our area and beat the crap out of each other. So it was like right after getting off the plane, right back into hard training camp. So I feel great. I'm, I'm in the best shape of my life. I'm the most prepared I've ever been. I'm healthy, I'm ready to go. And then uh, I'd like to take a couple weeks to chill. And then ideally, I'm back in here in June, July, latest August. I want to get one early year, kind of mid-year, and, and fall would be great, and that's three for the year. That would be awesome. Now, you're looking pretty clean cut right now. I saw a picture of you from a while back. You had a pretty sweet afro going on. Are we going to see that make a comeback one day? Dude, honestly, half the time it's not even intentional. I'm just like, I'll get my hair cut next week, and next thing I know, I've got like a full-blown like slash haircut going on. Like it, it, it really froze out after a certain length, but yeah, my barber took care of me. This time around, shout out to uh, Valley City Barbershop. Awesome, thank you, brother. Is that it? Oh, perfect. That was quick.